All right, my name is Justin Jenkins. Um, for this ground, ground project, I'll be talking about the AC joint, also known as the chromium cordicular joint. And let's get started. So a little bit about this uh, incident and injury. Uh, so this individual athlete, he's 23 years of age. He's a college football player. He plays West, Al at West Alabama here. He's a male, he's a, this is his senior year. He's a kickoff return starter. And uh, I put this in parentheses because he's the main returner. Um, I didn't want to get that confused. And he's also, but prior prior to this injury, he was he was starting as a wide receiver, but after he he had he became second string. So not the um, before this uh, before this AC sprain, uh, this individual he was uh, he hasn't had any injuries before this besides an um, ACL ACL sprain. Um, so this was a big deal for him. Uh, some clinical presentation. Um, so this happened September 11th, one of our very first, actually it was our very first away game. Uh, it was against Tuskegee. I unfortunately didn't get to, I didn't get to participate in this game. Um, I had some issues come up, but that's okay. Uh, so a little bit about this. So this individual, he went to, he went on a route, he caught the pass, and when he caught the pass, he was tackled and fell directly on his shoulder. So a little bit about this mechanism of injury. So um, when you fall on a, a shoulder like this, AC joint, the uh, chromium and the, the clavicles are getting compressed together really hard. And what that caused, it caused the uh, AC joint to tear. So that's what happened in this situation. So uh, this athlete, he fell and heard a pop in his right shoulder, and he was uh, immediately removed from play by ACs. And I'm getting this, in, I wasn't at this game, but I got this information from the preceptors and some of the ATs that were there. So immediately they wrapped it with ice on the shoulder, uh, so that's gonna re uh, reduce some pain, reduce the swelling, uh, kind of numb a little bit too. Um, so I love putting these kind of uh, pictures on here. These are classification pictures. So here, you got your top one, it looks, everything here looks really nice. You got your AC joint ligament here. You got your conoid ligament, you got your trapezoid ligament. And the top two, um, we've had a lot of those this semester as well. Um, you, it's just the AC joint ligament right here that's torn. So everything, you still, you get some pain, you get, some, you get a lot of pain with this too. So you, you, all these nerves here, they're, they're not severed. They're still there, so you got a lot of pain with it. But with a grade three, you severed the conoid, the trapezoid, and the AC joint ligament. So what you see, it pops up just like this. So we'll talk about this in the next couple of slides. So some physical exam findings. I didn't get to do the initial ones on the field, but um, I got to do them the day after. Uh, so what we do, Saturday we have the game, Sunday we have our uh, evaluations, we have our treatments, we have, and then we go from there to figure out what we're gonna do with these athletes that, that were previously injured. Previously injured. So for this athlete, uh, since this was a complete complete tear, it was grade three. Um, it, he didn't have a lot of pain besides the swelling causing the pain in the, in the capsule. Uh, he didn't have a whole lot of pain. So with the Anarchy side, you could press down on that AC joint or right there, uh, right there on top of the AC joint. You can see it come back up just like just like a piano key. That's a uh, that's a really good test, man. A really good. And cross cross body adduction test or scarf test, it was positive. So what you're doing, you're just bringing the uh, the shoulders and the horizontal adduction, and uh, what that does, it compresses that joint right there. So that's going to cause a lot of pain. Uh, the sensitivity is 77 percent, specificity 79 percent, positive uh, likelihood ratio 3.67, negative likelihood ratio 0 0.29, or however you want to uh, interpret that. Overall, it's it's a pretty decent test. It's not it's not the greatest test, but um, it's a pretty decent test. Uh, AC traction test. You just you just pull it down on the arm, um, and you you just pull the traction like it says. Good test, man. And you're gonna see it pop up if it's a grade three, or maybe even grade two. Um, you're gonna you're gonna definitely see some right shoulder depression just because it's a grade three sprain. You're gonna it's gonna have it's gonna be depressed a little. Um, you're gonna see your obvious step off deformity. So these are these two. These two can go uh, hand in hand because you got that depression. You got that depression because you got that step off deformity. You see. 
Um, you're always going to have a pack full of body abnormality. It's a cosmetic thing, you know. That's why a lot of people like to get the surgery. Uh, the surgery is not needed unless it's causing some kind of soft tissue damage or issues or form some kind of uh, osteophyte or osteophyte or bone spur. Uh, but other than that, it's more a cosmetic thing. Um, if you're going to have pain over the SC joint, usually you're going to have pain over it if, if they're swelling. But other than that, you, you're not going to see a lot of pain over it. So, some differential diagnoses you want to look at. Um, you definitely, definitely want to ensure that this is an AC joint sprain, not a shoulder dislocation. Even as, even as us as athletic trainers, we can, we can get a, a shoulder dislocation, AC joint uh, separation confused. And you'll be sitting there trying to um, relocate or reduce your shoulder. That means you really cut the relocator or reduce. Um, so you really want to pay attention to your, uh, your, your joint specifically. Uh, so you definitely want to know your, uh, your anatomy. Uh, you want to rule out any fractures, although you may have uh, IC joint separation. I also want to check for fractures on top of that. Same thing with brachial plexus and rotator cuff. The ICF model, I'm, I wasn't a huge, uh, I wasn't too familiar with these before uh, this class. I don't, I really don't think anybody was. But uh, a little bit about this. So this is some stuff that he has some difficulties with. So of course he's gonna have, a, he's gonna have most of his difficulty with horizontal adduction. Bringing the body, bringing the arm in front of the body, across the body. Um, even with horizontal adduction, extreme horizontal adduction where you you're coming all the way across because it's, it's causing a, little, a, a lot of separation. It, it, it's uncomfortable more than anything. Um, and you're gonna have rupture of AC ligament and AMS components, like we uh, explained earlier. <coughs> so the middle portion, um, I got to talk with this athlete about this during his treatment and rehab. So this is his ADLs or activities of daily living. There was, there was many mornings he would come in a little late. Um, I'll say it, I'd ask him if everything was all right, like I normally ask with all my athletes. And he said um, that he was just having complications, brushing his teeth, um, putting his shirt on, putting his pants on, kind of made him late. That's understandable. Um, so what we have on the end is his occupation, his sport, what he does, uh, and how this uh, AC joint sprain affects it. So as a wide receiver, he's got to catch the ball in front of his body. You can't catch a ball here. You got to catch it right here. So you got to have some uh, horizontal adduction. So uh, he had some difficulties with that for a while. So we had to manage that. Um, also with falling on that side, we had to manage that as athletic trainers. We had to pad that accordingly and all that kind of good stuff. So and we did that. And he had a he had a good season, even even with a great three AC joint sprain. So and this is more environmental and personal. Um, content. So this is a really good, really, really good X-ray. I've enjoyed looking at this one. So here you can see that this joint is nice and snug and all the ligaments are where they should be. But if you look over here on the right side, so this, this should be right here snug. Joint, joints and ligaments are snug. They're, they're supposed to be. Some have laxity. But they're not supposed to have this. That's a lot of separation right there. So from this, you can obviously tell that he's got a grade three AC joint sprain or separation. So the PRO I use for this is Shoulder Pain and Disability Index. It did consist of a questionnaire of 13 assessment items. Um, so the extent with ADLs requiring the use of upper extremities. Uh, so like I was explaining earlier, he had a lot of issues with his ADLs at first. Um, he had to cope and manage accordingly um, to this injury. Uh, it's a pain subscale has five items, a disability subscale has eight items. So a total of 13 different questions. And this uses a visual analog scale. Uh, so I'll, I'll provide a picture of this because myself, I wasn't very familiar with it as well. There's different kind of um, scales you can look at for PROs. And another really important thing with these, with these PROs, you gotta understand that some some are scored from zero to 100. A lot of them are scored from zero to 100. And you want to know if zero means good or zero means bad. For this one, zero is great. So 
So a hundred meters is, is not so good. So we'll go into this some more explanations afterwards. So this is a visual analog scale. Yeah, you can see here. So zero, no pain, 10, unbearable pain. Kind of like a pain scale. Um, actually, just like a pain scale. Uh, so that's how it's graded. So a little bit of uh, in-depth information. So we got a real reliability coefficient of um, ICC, uh, greater than or equal to 89% of the variety of patient populations. Uh, internal consistency high with chrome, chrome back atypically exceeding 9%. So we got a minimal clinical important difference uh, or MCID and has been reported to be reported to be eight points. So that's a little bit of information I wasn't very familiar with. I had to do some research on that one. Okay, that's a good one. So it's hard, to, it's very hard to see. Um, I'm gonna use this mouse. You, it's, you probably can't see it, but on the first one, like we explained earlier, like I explained earlier, the higher the percentage, the worse, the worse off he is. So you can see a lot of red right here. Uh, yellow, moderate, green, per great to perfect. So uh, he scored 73.1% on this. Um, so not, not too great there. But as of now, and uh, this was probably uh, towards the end of the treatment as well, he was able to uh, you know, cope, manage, uh, according with this, this type of injury. And uh, you can't really see it probably, it's, it's a very small slide here. That's at 13.1% right here for this one. Um, I, I was very interested in the way this was set up and how it was scored. And so that was the shoulder pain and disability index. So some of the treatment we got to do. So always when the athletes that uh, came in for treatment, you always want to start with uh, range of motion exercises. You want to regain that range of motion. Um, and you want that. You want to regain the range of motion and reduce pain as well at the same time. So those kind of you, you got to work hand in hand with those. Uh, so for the range of motion we've done favorite AC joint, uh, so favorite AC joint stretches we do. We do the T bar stretches where you just where you come up and, into uh, shoulder abduction and uh, you're bringing it up and uh, across your body too as well. So cross-body abduction and adduction. So the pendulums, I think as APs, we're all familiar with pendulums. At first, he couldn't do these very well. He had a lot of trouble. So we did body weight pendulums for a while. And we got a good thing uh, in our, our AT system. We got pulley system. They're very, very simple machines. Um, so these are very good for range of motion. Body weight eyes wise with these. He wasn't able to do eyes yet. He's, he had a very difficult time because of the compression of the joint. So he just done lines and T's for, well, probably the first week, we get some of that pain swelling down. Um, so the guys that we use, we use game ready to reduce swelling and add compression throughout this, throughout the first week anyway. So week two, uh, we, we continue to do our range of motion exercises, but we also implemented some strengthening exercises. So some of the same things, but you know, weighted. So we continue to do the T-bar stretch pulleys. Uh, we added some resistance bands. So we did some full weight range of motion. We did some extension, some flexion, some uh, internal rotation, external rotation. Uh, he had, had a decent amount of trouble with it at first. But um, this whole thing, that's whole part of the injury uh, process. We gotta, gotta get them back right so we can't skip any steps. Uh, so strengthening, some, some strengthening, uh, we added in, we added the arm back. Resistant arm bar. Um, we had two sets of two pound pendulums. Um, man, I added this because the first two sets he was good and fresh. The last set he was kind of uh, fatigued and it, it was kind of causing him some pain. So we did body weight on the last on the last set when we did this one else. And uh, so and also we did wise and T's two pound weights. And at this point he was able to do eyes uh, with no weights. So. As we're, as we're doing this, we're, we're, we're progressing. Uh, we're progressing really well. And um, some of the guys we continue to use, we use gay rating. We, we use some e-stim e too. We use some pre-mod setting. Uh, 
all pre mod is is uh, some pain modulation. Um, and uh, yeah, we use that with a lot of our AC joint sprains and, and different injuries such as that. Week three is throughout the remainder of the treatment. So we continue the previous treatment. We always want to continue range of motion, strengthening, um, and uh, continue modalities as well. So, and then we, we entered into some endurance training. So for endurance training, we added some VFR in. Um, they really like the VFR. Athletes don't really like it that much, but we don't do it very often, but it, it, it's, it's a good endurance training. Um, uh, some proprioception or some rhythm, rhythmic stabilization that we use. We have an athlete lie on their back or supine, however you want to put it, and we got them where their arm is straight out and the ball, they have a yellow two pound ball in their hand. And we just do some rhythmic stabilization, 30 seconds. It's, it's a tough one for them, but it works really well. They, they, we see some good outcomes with it. Um, so some return to play protocols we, we've done. Of course, we we uh, collaborated with the uh, physicians as well, which will be explained later in the PowerPoint. So we used the AC felt pad. Myself, I've never put on an AC felt pad until this semester. Um, it's pretty it's pretty common that we put an AC felt pad on. Um, so we did it before games and practice. Another thing we've done in our practice, so we mod we did a modified practice and contact. So with our injured athletes that we didn't want to get. Um, you know, too banged up for Saturday morning game or Saturday evening game, we would put a black jersey on to indicate that, hey, nobody bumped their knees, nobody tackled, nobody hit them, because we need them for the game, you know? So that's that's kind of what we've done. We, we did some collaboration with the coaches and whatnot as athletic trainers. So here we go. Um, like I was explaining, um, some interpersonal collaboration. So we, uh, we got our direction by the physician. So like I uh, showed you earlier, he had some imaging of uh, his AC joint. And of course we knew the AC joint was sprained. That was obvious. But a lot of times we, we get the x-ray, not just because of the AC joint, but we want to see if there's anything else there, like any fractures, um, anything like that, you know, because an interesting, an interesting thing with AC joint sprains, I only listed three of the common um, classifications. Now, there's actually up to five classifications for AC joint sprains. Um, and it includes uh, fractures along with the joint. You know. So, uh, like I was saying, we were approved, the uh, physician approved clinical decisions we, uh, that we went, as I we went, we went, we went with. And a thing that was interesting for me with us with us and our athletes, uh, with AC joint sprains specifically, since we're talking about that, at the game we have physicians that, uh, we have physicians every game, and um, they would offer injections, uh, pain relieving injections, or you could do oral that. Of course, the pain relieving injection is gonna work the best. It's gonna uh, be longer lasting. It's gonna, it's gonna act quicker just because of the, because uh, it's an injection. You know, the oral meds is gonna it's gonna take longer, you know, to metabolize and whatnot and get to your system and uh, work like it should. Um, so I think I think this athlete I think he actually preferred the uh, injections. They helped out a lot, but I mean a lot of people get scared of the needles and whatnot, and that's understandable. I I, I do myself. Uh, we also collaborated with the coaches. Um, we have day coaches on the athlete's condition, so. Anytime we got an update from the physicians, we would go around right to the coaches and update them. In this case, they can, uh, they can know what to expect and they can give us their opinion and we can offer ours. Uh, and they know which athlete they can put in their place or uh, whatnot. And uh, that's very important. Even though they're not specifically healthcare, they're still very important in this interprofessional collaboration. So a little bit of reflection. Um, so, so he is a senior and a college athlete. It's kind of hard for me myself. I'm a commuter. I don't know a lot of these. I don't know a lot of students around here, but not an athletic training program. So that's that's a, that's one big issue with me um, and the students here. 
if I don't have the contact info, like I'm going to talk about in a minute, I can't really get in touch with them. Like, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how they're feeling unless I ask them, like I always do during treatment or rehab or anything like that. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, the community is it's a, it's a tough thing. Um, if I had it my way, or in my wife's way, we'd live closer, it'd be easier. But, I mean, it, we met, I've managed as a community, and it's okay. Uh, treatment rotation, so with football, we had uh, rotations each each week as uh, morning groups. So one week we had one morning group, the next week we had another. It was kind of difficult for me to implement a, a program, and then the next week, oh, uh, it's much better, or not as good. I didn't get to check on them like I wanted to each week. So for me, I know it would have been very taxing, but I'd like to spend each week with them, you know? And I still could ask them on the field, but you know, I'd, I'd much rather be face to face in a treatment or rehab facility like, like ours that we have. Contact info, uh, I should do better on my part. I didn't have this contact information until mid semester, toward the, or toward, probably toward the end. So I didn't get a lot of information like I wanted to uh, for this for this grant round project. And I think this is a big deal. I think this is a good thing to do. Helps us with research. Helps us helps us communicate with our athletes. Um, you know, I learned a lot from this. Um, well, some positive things. Uh, this athlete really opened up to me. It was you got to actually uh, talk to your athletes. You got to they got to understand that you care about them too. And, uh, and that can be difficult for them if they don't, if, if you just go there and hey, spit out a bunch of rehab exercises or whatnot. But you want to actually get down and explain to them what you're doing and why you're doing it and show them some pictures. That, because sometimes you throw a lot of info out and they don't understand what you're saying. I don't understand, I don't understand what I'm saying sometimes. But you, you know, you want, you want to do some research. You want, you want them to know that you care and that you're, you're trying to help them, you're trying to get, uh, help them get back on the field or even throughout daily life. So uh, I thought this grammar project was was a was a big step for me. Thank you, and that's that's it.